Hi, I'm Jo Avery and I'm with you here on the Orothal stand at Quilt Market in Houston. Um, this is my first visit to Quilt Market. I'm a bit late because I missed, uh, the plane was cancelled, but I'm finally here. Yay. And, uh, yay. <laughs> and I'm going to talk to you about um, some embroidery and in fact cruel work because we're using wool. I have this collection. Um, this curated collection with Aurafil, which is all of their 12 weight wool in these lovely colors, a mixture of solids and variegated colors. Um, I used it to make this pebble sampler. This was the inspiration. I uh, wanted to try and do some cruel work, but give it a modern twist. So cruel work basically just means embroidery with wool, um, but there are various stitches which um, traditionally you would have used for cruel work. So I wanted to bring some of those in, but I wanted to make it look very modern. So I also brought in some felt applique. So these areas here, I've used felt, um, and I've used Aurifil 80 weight in a matching color to stitch those down around the edges. And that's also a little bit quicker than filling all the areas with embroidery. And then I've used this range of stitches. We've got um, chain stitches, split stitch, satin stitch, um, seed stitch, um, and colonial knots which I'm going to show you now which I love the colonial knots they look really cool and also I'm going to show you this spider's web back stitch which is this one here there's a couple that are that I'm not going to show you which are a bit unusual this rose stitch is actually on my blog so it's a tutorial for that and this laid work which is very traditional crew work I actually did that uh, as a video at <laughs> Festival of Quilts 2018 for oh, Aurafil, so that might be somewhere in your archives on the on the Facebook page. So. And we can add those links in after. Yeah, too. sure, that'd be great. Out. Okay, so now after I'd done this big one, I decided I'm teaching this now, so I decided to do some small mini ones, mini pebble samplers. So this one I thought I'd do all cool colours, and in fact I started this off as at a demo at Festival of Quilts this year on your Aurafil stand, um, and then so now I thought let's do one with all the hot colours. So I'm going to choose the sort of hot colours from here and then I'm going to add to it with other from your beautiful Aurifil range. I've got so many lovely colours. So to start with what I did was I just freehand drew up all these pebbles and I marked them out with a Frixian pen. Um, you can see the, the marks just very a little bit there. They're very faint actually. Um, you could you know you could do it on paper and until you're really happy with it and then you could trace it onto the linen but I just drew it freehand it's a very mindful thing you just make it. it's a bit like free motion quilting bubble pattern so and then what I did was I've outlined it with a single strand of um, Aurifil in the charcoal charcoal is one of the ones I put in here and I've done that but I haven't outlined the ones where I'm gonna do the the um, felt because I want to use, I want to put the felt on and outline them afterwards so that's just a different approach now I've just remembered while I'm chatting to you that we're gonna use a double thread for everything else so <laughs> well, I was like oh yeah okay. of course I've prepared some thread I've threaded them up but I didn't make them double so <laughs> anyway let's get started so I'm gonna start off showing you the um, spider's web back stitch so just a little tip here for uh, embroidery I always start with my knot on the top and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and start. And what will happen is that everything else is gonna be embroidered over and it'll keep that edge in. And when I, you know, when I embroider up to here, I'll get, get rid of the knots. But in the meantime, let's look at the back. We can actually just fix this in through a few of these lines that are already there so that it's nicely held. It'll get stitched on more. And as I say, we'll get rid of those knots then. It just means that if you don't have any knots at all, in your um, embroidery, especially if it's a larger embroidery, then there's never going to be any pulls or puckers. You know, over time, things can stretch and, and shrink, and, and you know, I was taught never to keep any knots in your embroidery. So, okay, so now we've come up in the middle of this here, and we're going to give ourselves eight spokes. We can keep going back to the middle, we can go over here, and bring it into the middle. So, I want these to all be stitches that go into the middle rather than just straight stitches that go across because you know really you should be able to do this sort of thing but no I want them all to have a point in the middle so this is going to be my first four or eight really and then I'm going to go and do another two so that's six or now we'll do eight. 
you could do this you could do this with um, six and it would look a bit different or seven um, if you do it with an odd number you end up with more like a rose look to it so but this is spider's web backstitch so we need eight because there's eight spokes to a, a spider is that right or is that just legs I'm a bit confused now <laughs> I think legs. it is yeah but maybe it's Eight yeah, legs. they have eight legs, but I'm hoping that this spider's web also has <coughs> eight. I don't know anything think about that. So anyway, I'm gonna, now I've done my spokes, I'm going to come up pretty close to the middle, but between two of those spokes. And then what we do is we go back through the, the spoke behind and we come out through the one in front. Okay, make sure. And so we then do the same thing. We go back and then we come out. So we just keep turning around. You through that spoke there, you go back through that spoke and through the next spoke. So your needle's going through two spokes. Oops. Don't stab yourself. <laughs> uh, back and through, and it's you know it's pretty easy now. You're trying not to go through the linen. You're just going through the stitches, and you just keep going around. And what's going to happen is they're going to give you these kind of raised arm look, a bit like a starfish. And as you add more and more of these in. You can press them, you can move them with your nails further down and you, so that you can squeeze as many in as possible. I'm gonna do it until I run out of thread and I'm gonna show you, you should, and it should you know, start to appear by then. It's going around here. I think this probably has some other names, but I know it as spiderweb backstitch. Embroidery stitches often have multiple names. There we go. And I'll need to stop in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you can see how this lovely sort of raised pattern is. I'll show you one that I have done. It's one I prepared earlier, as they say. So this is the sort of thing here, or there's another one there. And you can really see that one, I think, works quite well. You can see the definition. Oh, yep, so you just keep going around until you can't fit any more in, and then you stop. It's a really nice stitch to do. Easy, but really effective. So awesome. now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you one more. So I'm just going to quickly, this is how I would finish off my threads. I wind them through some of the stitches on the back that are already there and then I just cut it away. And look, I'm showing you the back of my work now, you know, I don't usually <laughs> like to do that. So there's a few things there that need to, this, will, this, this thread here, it'll get stitched over and covered by some other ones. Okay, so here's some thread I prepared earlier. Oh, I love and I, <laughs> Yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? I don't know if it's a... I love using all these uh, hot colors. I mean, I like the blues and greens, but I think these are, this is gonna be even better. So let's put a knot in, and we're gonna use a bigger space. Let's use this one here. So again, I wanna put my, so I always put my knot about an inch away from where I'm gonna stitch. We'll just go through those stitches at the back there to hold it in place. As I say, these will get cut off later. And we'll start in the middle of here. And we're going to do a colonial knot. And I used to do lots of French knots. I love a bullion knot, but oh, I love colonial knots. They're my new favorite thing. And it's great to have it on a video because literally you have to watch this over and over again until you get it. But, you know, <laughs> it's no other way of doing it. It took me ages to learn this. What I'm going to do is I'm holding this with my left hand away. And then I'm getting my right hand slightly awkward movement. And I'm going to put my needle underneath it. And then do a figure of eight with the, and hopefully you can, let me pull it a bit tighter. I'm gonna do it again. Go under and then over. And hopefully you can see that figure of eight there that I've created, like a little rope twist. Once you've done that, you pull it tight and you go back in where your knot is. Maybe just one or two threads of linen. Don't go in the same place, but go very close to it and you pull it tight. And it gives you this really nice knot. It's a bit more raised and it's a bit more, uh, I think it's a neater knot than a French knot. It has a little swirl on the top and they all look the same. So let's look at it again. So we're holding that with our left hand and then we get our right hand and you're almost kind of crossing over your hands to put that needle underneath. And then you do a figure of eight on top, pull it, and then take your, it's quite good to do it here where you're not, you've got some space underneath the hoop. So I like to do this on a table or something on. And then we pull it tight and we've got our colonial knot. So what I like to do with these colonial knots is just put lots of them together in like a kind of cushion of knots and I just love the texture it gives you it's a really nice filling one I mean obviously you can use them maybe to create a pattern as well you could you know you could for instance if I wanted to I could do them all the way around something but I really like this idea as sort of filling up a whole area 
No, so I'm go home and try this. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. You're going to have to watch this video a few times I to do know. it. I learned to do this on a YouTube video, actually, and I literally had to watch it and watch it and watch it. Let's just tell you that one more time. So we're going to pull that like this. We're going to almost cross our hands over to go underneath to get our needle underneath. Mm -hmm. And then we wrap it around in a figure of eight, pull it a little bit tight, and then go back in here. Okay, so you can see that looks really, let me show you ones that I did earlier. So here we can see ones, quite a lot more space between them yeah. here. <laughs> so obviously every time I, I do it. it, I do them a little bit differently. Here's someone here as well. Yeah. Oh, I love them. So hopefully you'll go home and uh, have a practice at those and maybe yeah. buy the, the lovely box. And look at these colors. Do, do, see, there's do, some do. variegated in there and yeah. you've got those warms and the hots and they're the They're definitely my colors. I think this is my third collection and I think there are various uh, varieties of yeah. these colors. I'll just show you one more thing, which is that you could also use it for beautiful hand quilting. So this is all the wool being used on the hand quilting here. This is a oh, modern rice gorgeous. pouch and I've also used it on a mini version. Mm -hmm. So a little bits of the same thing going on here and it, yeah, it's really nice to use. That's the variegated there, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it's fantastic and it gives such a great color pop. And the other thing you could do that you can put it in the machine with 50 weight in the bobbin and you can create beautiful um, machine quilting with it. Yeah. And it's, I haven't got anything with me, but it is it has such a great effect and it doesn't break at all. It's amazing. That's fantastic. Okay, oh, so so wonderful. Now I feel like everybody's going to have to watch this over and over again so we can all learn how to do those stitches. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Erin. Okay, Bye. we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.